Hello, I'm Michael Sherlock, CEO of two different companies. Shock Your Potential is a global leadership and sales training organization, and Kukwa Biz is a global staffing company matching talented professionals from Kenya with small businesses around the world. Now, through our YouTube channel, we seek to motivate and inspire people to excel in their careers in particular. And I'm glad you've joined us today for the first of a 10-part series that will help you to get promoted. Hmm, how do you get promoted? Is it as simple as just asking your boss for a promotion? What if he or she says no? How do you navigate this journey? Well, through this 10-part series, we're going to discuss the answers to those questions and quite a few more, but we're going to start today in part one with a very important question, and that is, what do you want to get out of your career? Hmm. Now, I don't mean the final position or the perks or even the pay. I mean, what do you want to gain from the journey? And believe me, it is a journey. You know, when I was in college, I wanted to be a lot of things. And I mean, a lot of things. I wanted to do everything. One day I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I mean, I loved kids. I loved teaching. I'd get the summers off. I mean, how much better could it be? But what I didn't ask myself was, why do I want to be a teacher? What do I want to get out of this? Did I want to be a teacher for my whole career? Become a principal? Maybe elevate to superintendent of a district? You know, not every job has to end in promotion or career, but I didn't recognize then that upward mobility and opportunity was important to me. And uh, so was a livable income. <laughs> so after just one year of teaching, I decided I wanted something more. Eventually, I knew that what I wanted out of my career was that opportunity for upward mobility. I wanted to definitely have more financial opportunities than I did. And I wanted to manage people and departments and eventually companies. And that understanding led me to make different choices in my career, it made me pick different jobs. I made requests for promotions on a frequent and well thought out basis because I knew where I wanted to go and why I wanted to get there. And after managing my own career and those of thousands of others, I know that the most important step to a successful promotion is first being clear about what you want and why you want it. So here are my top 10 tips for determining what you really want out of your career. Tip number one, where do you see yourself at retirement? I bet you thought I was going to say five years from now, you know, your typical question in an interview. I actually hate that question, but you can't determine where you'll be five years from now until you know where you want to be at retirement. So now don't fret. This isn't set in stone. If you say this today, it doesn't mean you can't change it later. But it is the most desirable endpoint at this time for you. And it's really important. I want you to write this vision down. Now, as you write it down, I want you to think about it. Create picture boards if you need to. If you see yourself in a corner office of a high rise, put those pictures in front of you so that you can truly visualize it. What's your title? What's your pay? Where do you go on vacation? What kind of car do you drive? Once you have it in mind, we're ready to move on. But at this time, you might be saying, but Michael, just a few minutes ago, you told me it's not about the title or the pay or, you know, now you want me to think about my car and vacations. Well, yes. And that's because it's part of the process and important for number two. Let's go into that. Tip number two, write out now why your vision looks the way it looks. Not why do you want that vision, but why does it look the way it looks? It's because you know someone whose work life looks that way today or that you've known in the past? Do you imagine that that's what somebody's life looks right now that's the head of a major company? Is it something you've seen on TV? Now be honest here because most of us create the scenarios because of what we think things will be like or should be like without really understanding how someone got from where they are today to when you've seen them at their best. This part of the exercise is a little challenging because once you've written that vision of where do I want to be at retirement, you know, first of all, that's a, that's a big question. You have to go through a lot of steps to think about that, but it's important. And then when you have to say, why do I think it looks the way it looks, that allows us some hmm, reality, which goes into tip number three, look back right now, reflect on your vis visualization and the reason your vision looks the way it does and ask yourself, is this realistic. Now it very well may be, which is fantastic. But for most of us, our visions like mine was at 26, 
when I thought, you know, one day I'm going to run a global cosmetics company like Maybelline. You know, it's not that it wasn't possible, but it was improbable. I mean, I daydreamed about flying all over the world in a private jet. Well, in reality, I was working for a nonprofit in a little town called Spokane, Washington, while making $24,000 a year. Now, if really running Maybelline Cosmetics was my realistic dream and vision, not that it couldn't have been, but if it was, I would have taken different steps, even in that very moment of deciding that it was possible to make it actually happen. And that's what I'm trying to get us to do in this process is to take those visions and figure out how to make them a reality if they have a good realistic possibility. So if I really wanted to make that a realistic possibility, I would have left that job in Spokane and I would have moved to New York and taken any position with Maybelline, even as an intern, unpaid, in order to take the steps towards making that big dream a reality. So at this point in time, you look at this, now it's time to rewrite the vision again. Where do you see yourself at retirement after going through the first three steps? You know, if it's exactly the same as you wrote the first time, excellent. If it's a wee bit different, excellent. If it's vastly and completely different, excellent. But if it's the last one, if it's vastly different, then go back and do steps two and three again. Now, remember, there's no right or wrong answers. There's just the realization of when something really has a basis in reality and when there's a basis in fantasy. And it doesn't mean that we shouldn't reach for the stars or dream big, but that difference in reality about what's probable and possible, those are important for being able to take the right steps to not only get that promotion, but to make that promotion work for you to get to that picture. So this is going right into tip number five. Now that you know where that big vision is, I want you to identify how many promotions and or big steps you'll need to take to go from where you are today to that big picture. So let's go back to my, uh, Michael's going to take over Maybelline Cosmetics. If I started out as an intern, as an unpaid intern, and I wanted to be the CEO of that one day, I'd first have to get hired from my free internship or unpaid internship. Then I'd have to get more responsibility. I'd have to make sure people uh, saw me and saw that I created value. I'd have to get to management, then manage a department, probably manage a division, become a vice president, probably an executive vice president, and maybe then I'd have a shot at it. So there's a lot of big steps and there's a lot of little steps in between. And that's important is to understand how we get from here to there. And you're probably still thinking about Michael, I just watched this video because I want to know how to get a promotion, but this is where it really starts to come together. Once you've looked at all these steps, you have to ask yourself, what is the one next step I must take. The one. I hear you. I know you're still saying, Michael, but that's why I'm watching this video. How do I get promoted? This is the thing I want you to focus on. When you know what the right next step is that you must take, you have to ask yourself, is this promotion that I'm looking for right now what I want to do or should be doing? Because sometimes they're one and the same. And one time, and other times they're completely different. We can get sidetracked easily from our big vision by a promotion that we think we want now. They can be shiny objects that lure us in one direction or the other. Believe me, I've been there, done that. And this promotion actually might be the best next step, which is great. Then you're validating that in this process. And that's precisely why I want you to go through the process is to be sure. Because if it isn't, you have to also make different decisions that might not be easy in the moment, but will benefit you towards that long-term vision in the, in the end. So tip number seven, once you do know the best next step, write it down, just like you did the retirement vision. Now here's where we get even deeper. Now that you see yourself in that position, what does your work life look like? Now, I'm not here asking about your pay or your day to your vacation or your new car. I'm talking about what you're doing on a day to day basis. What are you spending your time on? Who are you spending your time with? Where are you spending that time? You know, if your promotion requires more travel or even lots of it, is that okay for you? What are the pluses and minuses of that? Will you be managing people for the first time or way more people than ever before or no longer managing people? Is that okay for you? Will you have greater expectations on deliverables? 
Is that okay? Now there's no right or wrong answers. There's no good or bad. These are areas for reflection to make sure that the pros and cons of this promotion really truly work for you and serve you towards moving towards that vision, which moves us into tip number eight. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Oh man, you're probably going, Michael, I didn't know it was supposed to be this hard. I just want to get a promotion. Well, to navigate a good promotion, you have to know what you want. You have to know what you don't want. And you have to know what you're willing to do to put up with or lose to gain that. And always ask yourself if you're headed in the right overall direction for your big picture goal. That means at times this process will be stressful. Now, as we get close to the end, this one's going to probably surprise you. Tip number nine is once you're comfortable with your big vision and have clearly identified your next step, find your truth speaker and talk it out. Who's your truth speaker? It's that person you trust, the person who will be honest with you, but not brutal. They won't sugarcoat things, but they won't be a naysayer. They will tell you the truth. Again, I can hear you already, but Michael, why in the world would I need to talk to someone else about this? I mean, that's what we're doing. I'm watching this video because of this, and this is my personal stuff here. But remember this, promotions are serious things. You sometimes, we sometimes, I sometimes in the past, looked as promotion as something just for me, what it was going to do for me. And it, if you look at it from a different perspective, you're going to understand something maybe a little new here. Promotions are very serious. They are as important for you to get right for you as they are for the company who's trusting you with new responsibility. You honor yourself and the company, but not, by not only just going through this process, but by having one last quality control function in getting someone else's opinion. Now, this doesn't have to make it or break it for you if they say, hey, I don't think this is right, but your truth speaker will give you insight that you can't always access from inside of your own head because you're going for what you want, which takes us to tip number 10. Finally, you're ready to ask for the promotion. Well, kind of. If you know me by now, you know it's never that simple. And that's why when we come back next week for part two, we're going to talk about increasing your chances for success in asking for that promotion by fully understanding the job you want. And thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you next week. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video and leave your comments in the comment section. We actually do read and respond to every single one. And as always, remember, we are here to help you shock your potential.